GOP frontrunner Mitt Romney. The president named names and in the last hour certainly did not mince words. And proposed a budget so far to the right, it makes the contract with America look like the New Deal. In fact, that renowned liberal Newt Gingrich first called the original version of the budget radical and said it would contribute to right-wing social engineering. One of my potential opponents, Governor Romney, has said that he hoped a similar version of this plan from last year would be introduced as a bill on day one of his presidency. It is a Trojan horse disguised as deficit reduction plans. It is really an attempt to impose a radical vision on our country. It is thinly veiled social Dar Darwinism. And let's bring in our News Nation political panel, nationally syndicated radio talk show host Steve Dace, who's endorsed Newt Gingrich, and Real Clear Politics national political reporter back with us again, Aaron McPike. Aaron, let me start off with you here on this. Uh, President Obama, we know we got in advance what he would say, but certainly his tone, the toughness being applauded by his supporters. And I've got a list of Republicans who've sent out uh, statements. Paul Ryan saying that this is reckless, uh, like his reckless budget. Today's speech by President Obama is revealing as it is disappointing while others lead by offering real solutions he's chosen to distort the truth and divide Americans uh, House Speaker Boehner instead of reaching across the aisle to enact the changes needed to restore America's prosperity the president has resorted to distortions and partisan pot shots looks like some of what he had to say Aaron certainly stung it did, but you know, look, the Republicans distort his record all the time, too. The thing that stood out to me about that speech was that he called Governor Romney out by name mm -hmm. because he does not like to do that. He talks about how there's still a primary going on and the Republicans should be able to sort through their process. But it's clear through all the actions that the Obama campaign and the White House have taken in the last week and some of the words that have come out of President Obama's mouth, the general election is on. Absolutely. He may not like to do it early on, but we know where things stand right now with Mitt Romney being the front runner. But here's the deal, Steve. Let's look at this Paul Ryan plan that the president, I mean, we said it was killing two birds, if you will, with one stone. It's supported by Mitt Romney. We know certainly it came from Paul Ryan. And if you hear the president there, he used your guy, Newt Gingrich, to be the stone, if you will, to throw at these two leading Republicans. The Ryan budget cuts $2.4 trillion from Medicaid, $463 billion from mandatory programs like Pell Grants, other social services, $291 billion from discretionary programs, $134 billion from food stamp programs. You heard the president use the Trojan horse here with this argument. What's your take on this speech, especially the fact he used your guy, Newt Gingrich, to go after your party? Well, what, what the president was alluding to is what was certainly not one of the former speaker's finer moments on this presidential campaign, and it nearly derailed his campaign uh, several months ago when he made that statement. I think that Really, the question here, and, and I'm going to do something I don't do very often, which is give the Republicans credit. I mean, with For what's what? happening, because what they're doing is they're actually framing the debate. Uh, the American people are not in a mood to grow government. Uh, they would like to see government reduced. And so that's going to cause a discussion that if you don't like these cuts, then what do you actually want cut? What do you actually want done? And maybe the president also needs to be reminded that there's Democrats as well on Capitol Hill, and uh, his, some of his budget proposals haven't had overwhelming Democratic support either. Well, Aaron, if that is the case, and Steve says that people are in the mood to cut, we know time and time again when you look at the polls, folks say, including the most conservative, that they want to cut, but they don't want anything cut that benefits their life. And therein lies the problem, Aaron. It does, but you know, I would point out, now this didn't get a ton of coverage, but over the last six months or so, this White House has announced a couple of initiatives to cut government, to get out some of the additional administrative costs and to start streamlining agencies. But, but people aren't talking about that because they don't seem to think that Democrats are cutting government too, but that's what this White House is trying to do. But you're absolutely right. The New York Times uh, a couple of months ago did a very big story on how on, on how Americans in all kinds of states and those who use the most government programs hate the government and don't seem to even realize that they're getting government dollars in their own lives. And let me play what the president had to say about the Supreme Court regarding his health care law. He made similar comments in the Rose Garden. Let's play what he said again today before the AP. I don't anticipate the court striking this down. Uh, I, I think they take their responsibilities very seriously. 
So there, that's just a little bit, Steve, of what the president said there. But we know that he was criticized uh, by, again, many conservatives and people on the right when he referred to an unelected group uh, making the decision here. Kind of the same argument we've heard from conservatives when they've not liked the decisions made by judges, Steve. Well, his application is consistent, but his premise is flawed. For example, if, his, if the president's premise was consistent, his application would be. I'm sure he'd speak up on behalf of Proposition 8 and voter ID laws, but he hasn't done that. The reality here is there, there's nothing unconstitutional about a court determining what its opinion, and that's exactly what we're talking about here, its opinion is on the constitutionality of a piece of legislation. What happens next is when we get into the activism part. When judges believe that they can therefore impose their own law, like what the judges in my home state did on the issue of marriage, for example, that's when we get into activism. I don't think anybody's arguing that judges have a role in this process and they're allowed to advise and consent. It's what comes after they issue their opinions. That's that's what defines activism. Let me switch to the other topic that we, I mean, you know, many people at least thought we'd be talking about, which is Super Tuesday, Wisconsin, because the polls, I think, show Mitt Romney with such a significant lead, Aaron. It's kind of one of those want want moments, unless tonight we're all surprised. But what's also stolen the show from Mitt Romney is Sarah Palin's appearance on the Today Show. Let me play what she had to say about the front runner, uh, Mitt Romney, when asked by Matt Lauer this morning. It seems he is the nominee. Are you happy with that? Uh, you know, anything is still possible. There can still be a bit of a shakeup. And it doesn't sound like you're happy with Mitt Romney as the party's nominee. Anybody but Obama. I honestly believe that anybody running on that GOP ticket would be infinitely better than what we have today. Let me bring in Michael Smirconish, Aaron and Steve. He's standing by. Her answer, anybody but Obama, but not once did she name anything that she believed Mitt Romney uh, brought to the table through ideas, policies, plan. It's just the anybody but Obama. And then that breathe in moment cannot be ignored. That was her first reaction when he asked her about Mitt Romney. Last night on Hardball, we played a, a whole series of GOP, GOP endorsements of Mitt Romney to talk about how tepid each of them seemed. As a matter of fact, Yahoo has created a, a March Madness-like bracket where you vote on, on whose was more tepid. So she's sort of parroting what you hear from a large segment of the GOP populace, that they're just not enthused. And Tamron, call me a cynic. I can't help but watch that and also say, isn't she a bit envious of the fact that he's about to close the loop on the Republican nomination? Because in my heart of hearts, I think she wants to be in that position. And when she talks about the convention, she's thinking about herself in that role. Well, she says that there are still delegates and, and she questioned whether someone else could come in and, and by math win this. Who's she talking about? I, I don't know who she's talking about. I wonder the same thing. But with that said, she had a chance to get in the game. No doubt. She had a chance. She did not. No, I think she wanted more of a coronation. I, I think that she was hoping that this process was going to disintegrate and that someone or some group of people would turn to her in the 11th hour in Tampa. And it looks increasingly unlikely that that's going to happen because Romney's going to cinch this. Steve, she knew she'd be asked this question, not because she had the questions in advance, but what else were we going to start off with other than what do you think of Mitt Romney? He's the front runner. Um, I don't know if her response had been thought out in her head. Nonetheless, when your first reaction is this breathe in moment, I think that speaks volumes, whether she said it or not. Listen, I'll have to defer to you, Tamron, on female body language. But well, no, 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 nah, I don't like that, because that's male or female. This has nothing right, to do with well, her gender. Well, politi politically speaking, I certainly think that uh, she is speaking for a lot of conservatives. Mm -hmm. And I think also she is aware that if this went to a convention and if it was brokered, if there was a draft somebody else who's not running list, she would be number one on that list. And I think that there's several Republicans that have watched and saw how this process has played out, how weak of a candidate Romney is as a front runner, and have maybe reevaluated the decisions that they made when they decided not to get in. Because this looks very familiar. I mean, this looks like John Kerry in 2004, Bob Dole in 1996. Remember when he literally said to conservatives, I'll give you another Reagan if that's what you want. Tell me what you want. It looks like George Herbert Walker Bush in 1992. It looks like Gerald Ford in 1976. And what do all those elections have in common? The, all those guys lost. Right. Aaron, let me get your thoughts on this. I mean, here we are again, and I don't want to belabor her reaction because she gave the reaction that she felt. Uh, she says she's a straight shooter in her heart, so I think she put it out there, and it certainly was not, as Michael pointed out, a resounding endorsement of him. She said more strongly anybody but Obama rather than this is our guy and here's why.
Yeah, well, look, I would also point out, I would disagree a little bit with what Steve said, that she may not any longer be the choice of conservatives. I think many people were hoping that Chris Christie or Jeb Bush, even Haley Barber, some of these other conservatives would have been the choice at a brokered convention. But she's losing her grip on the party and on that conservative wing of the party as a kingmaker. She's been trying to pull Newt Gingrich through this all the way and, and also saying Rick Santorum needs to keep fighting the good fight. So she's really stirring the pot more than anything and really likes the attention of doing that. And with Romney shutting this down, she becomes less relevant throughout the rest of this year. Michael, I'll give you the final thought because that plays into exactly what you believe. I don't know that it necessarily helps her to be doing the Today Show. It was Or helps great. Mitt Romney it for was, that matter. It was great television. I haven't been so interested in, in morning news as I was today because it, it made for great entertainment. But I, I don't know that it furthers her case if she wants to be elected nationwide because you begin to see her more in that role than you do as a chief executive. And you begin to wonder some of these endorsements and at least how they're being worded if Mitt Romney doesn't think in his mind, never mind, I don't need the help. Let me True. just, let me limp through this on my own and deal with the general election when I get there. Thank you very much. Thank Greatly you. appreciate it. Aaron, Steve, and Michael, of course.